Today, I want to do something a little different. And when you look at each and every one of us at some time has lost something and recognize the feeling that we have when there is loss. You know that nut in your stomach, that, that crazy feeling that comes because you lost it. But we also have an experience of that joy that comes, finding that something which was lost and restored. It is a great feeling, it's joy. Brethren, today, I want to talk about joy, the joy that comes from something that was lost and is found. And I'm going to draw a title. My title, I call it The Shepherd's Joy. And we shall be looking at Luke 15, chapters 1 through 7. But before I read that, those verses, I want to give us, by way of an introduction, some information about this chapter. It is said to be the most loved and renowned chapter of all the Bible, and is broken down by writers and preachers, and is dealt with as containing three precious parables. Number one, the lost sheep, and verses one through seven. Number two, the lost coin, verses eight through 10. And number three, the lost son, verses 11 through 32. However, the whole chapter is but one parable having three pictures, and there's no break in these verses. One illustration flows into each other. So when we read verse three, you'll see, he spoke this parable unto them in the singular form, this parable. And it means that the entire chapter constitutes the particular parable. While there are succeeding stages of the parable, there's no break in it. The illustration Jesus used are not repetitious. They declare the same truth in the conclusion of the matter. Truth, but each one reveals a different phrase of it. So today I want to focus on parable number one, the lost sheep. First, I want to read all seven verses. So please join me. I kind of made things easy, so I just took a page of <laughs> the Bible we carry, <laughs> the King James with all this. It's, it's a load, but we carry the light weight of our hearts. Please join me. Chapter 15 of Luke, verses 1. Then all the tax collectors and sinners drew near to him to hear him. That was Jesus speaking. And the Pharisees and scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners, and he eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them, saying, what man of you having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? Five. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls all his friends 
and neighbors sing to them, rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. So brethren, I want to take a look at why Jesus gave this parable. And as I extrapolated through research, I want to share some of the information that I found. Okay. The first thing I found was that the Pharisees and them were offended to see Jesus associated with men and women who did not keep the law. And they were looked upon as sinners. They gave them a general classification. People who did not keep the law, they called the people of the land. We as people of color have some euphemisms of stuff that we have been called at times. Few, I wouldn't mention any of those. And they incorporated in the law with aims and, and, and belief that they should avoid these people of the land at all cost. And these regulations was especially to avoid them. They didn't get in the way in the marketplace. Whatever it was to have a contact with the people of the land was like untouchable. But they also had this attitude that all sinners should be damned. They should be killed. They don't they didn't even have it in their mind that there should be a saving grace extended to the sinners of the world. My friend, to help us get a better understanding of what Jesus was saying to these people, I have did a little research on the parable of the lost sheep. But many of us are not very familiar with being a shepherd. I mean, out here we have John Wayne, a cowboy. When they have a shepherd, well, you know, we eat mutton and stuff, but we never, never mind that job. That's a low job. And what I found is this. Bear with me, I'm going right along. The shepherd of Judea, during Jesus' time, had a very hard task and dangerous. Pasture was scarce, and the narrow central plateau plunged down into a wild cliff. And because of a terrible devastation of the desert, it was not easy to look after the sheep. And there were no restraining walls, and the sheep would wander. On some high areas at night, wolves would be howling, and this would not be an easy task for the shepherd. And if you met a shepherd, he was sleepless, far-sighted, weather-beaten, and leaning over his staff and looking over his sheep with every one of them on his heart. He never wanted to lose one of them. The shepherd also was personally responsible for the sheep. They were experts of tracking and could follow the strange sheep's footprint for miles across the hills. Many of the flocks 
were not even individually owned. They were owned by the villagers. And there would be two or three shepherds in charge. Now, those flocks were safe, would arrive home. Those whose flocks were safe would arrive home in the evenings and bring the news of those that were still out of the hills searching for a lost sheep. Meanwhile, the whole village would be on watch. And when they saw a shepherd striding home with the lost sheep across his shoulder, they would rise from the area and the whole community would show with joy and thanksgiving that the lost sheep was found. Brethren, when we look at the picture of the shepherd, we could understand why the shepherd name sprang up to the front of the people's history and was given to the king and made a symbol of providence. Moses and David were shepherds by occupation and they also function in the same way and capacity as leaders of God's flocks. Jesus took the shepherds as a symbol of sacrifice. And he also said, I am the good shepherd. In John 10, 11, Isaiah 40, 11, we find some information there. And we find that there were many prophetic references to the one who would appear as the ideal shepherd. Psalms 23, Revelation 7, 17. Now I want to answer the question, why did Jesus give this parable of the lost sheep? Brethren, Christ designed this parable to show the great joy that God takes in the conversion and reconciliation of one sinner. And for that reason, we should all rejoice that we are not left outside. Now, who are the lost sheep? There's a play here on words. Brethren, we are that lost sheep. A sinner that goes astray, lost to God, to the flock, has no communion with him, lost to him, don't know where he is, and wonder endlessly, continually, exposed to prey and terror from under the care of the shepherd, wanting some green pastures and cannot find it because he is strayed from the fold. You know, God takes care of the sheep that did not stray because they are safe in the wilderness. But he takes particular care of the lost sheep. Brethren, although he has a hundred sheep, which is a considerable flock, yet he will not lose one which is lost. But he goes after it, and when it is found, it gives him great joy. Just like the shepherd who has found his lost sheep. Brethren, you know, being a shepherd is a humble job. And sometimes we don't realize 
Humility is a trait that God expects of us. Moses was humble. And I guess, I believe the humblest of all was Jesus Christ. And he was our Lord and Savior. He washed feet. And he cares for the lost sheep. Brethren, there is more joy in heaven. Verse 7, Jesus said, there is more joy in heaven over a sinner who repents than 99 just persons who needs no repentance. I'd like to just close by saying this. Man gives up hope for sinners, but not so with God, because he loves folks who never strays away, but deep within his heart, there is great joy of joys when one lost sinner is found and comes home. And you know, David recognized that great shepherd in Psalm 23. He said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And brethren, if we go through the rest of that psalm, we will come to realize that God wishes that every one of his sheep should be saved. But we have to put our trust in Jesus Christ because there is joy that comes to the shepherd from the lost sheep.